I got this message on Instagram the other day and it was not the first time I've received this question. So I thought my response deserved an entire YouTube video. So the message said, I've seen you post a lot recently about students struggling to identify the operation in fraction word problems. I used to chart like this with my third graders, but I'm curious as to whether or not it can cause confusion or misconceptions as they get into higher grades like fifth. Thoughts? Well, I have a lot of thoughts. This flow chart or the GET strategy, I think it's groups equal total. This has become a really popular problem solving strategy. I've seen these posters hung around plenty of classrooms. And so I wanted to share my thoughts about this strategy just to give you some things to think about. If this is a strategy you're either considering using or one that you're currently using, just so you can make kind of an informed decision as to whether it's something that you want to continue using with your students. So I'll go ahead and say, I don't necessarily love this strategy or this flow chart. And there's a couple reasons why. My first reason is it doesn't always work. So anytime we are teaching students a new strategy, whether that's with a specific concept or it's with something bigger, like a problem solving strategy, we really need to think about whether it works in all situations. And the reason for this is if it works in like 90% of situations, but it doesn't work in the other 10%, well, maybe there's a reason for that. Like I, that to me is like a reason to pause and say, hmm, why doesn't this always work? Is this a trick? Is this really building the understanding that we want to be building? Like that just gives a lot of questions to me anytime I'm using a strategy and it's like, oh, it works sometimes, but not always. And so I think this teacher kind of knew this and I love that she was thinking ahead to fifth grade. So she's a third grade teacher and in third grade, it probably always works for her. But I get the sense that she's thinking it may not always work when we get to upper elementary and middle grades and so forth. And she's actually right. It doesn't always work. So the most obvious time that it doesn't work is when we're working with multi-step problems. So if there are multiple actions or multiple operations that need to happen, students would have to go through the flow chart multiple times, I guess. And let me add this disclaimer. I've not ever used this strategy, but I'm just look outsider looking in. I'm sharing kind of my hesitations with it. So back to the multi-step problems. If you are a teacher who's using this, definitely let me know in the comments. Are you having students go through this flow chart multiple times? Um, to me, that seems a little cumbersome, but the real reason I really struggle with it not always working all the time is because we actually had a Another person posted about this in our Mix and Math 360 Facebook group, and she said, we use this strategy, this you know, groups equal total strategy with our students, and they are really struggling with multiplying fractions because we actually know the total, but if you know the total and you're following this flow chart, the only options are addition and subtraction. So even if a student follows this flow chart perfectly, they aren't able to get to the correct operation. So this is another situation where it doesn't work all of the time. Another reason that I'm a little hesitant about this strategy is it feels like something else for students to memorize. I wonder if the time that is spent trying to get students to remember the flow chart and remember that if it, if you know the total, but I mean, I, I don't use flow chart, so I can't even tell you off the top of my head, like what it looks like. But the amount of time that we spend getting students to memorize the flow chart, I wonder if that time would be better spent helping students truly build an understanding of the operations. And that's the third reason why I am, do not love this strategy um, is because it doesn't build a true meaning behind the operations. So with this flow chart, we are really kind of like taking the meat behind problem solving out in the sense that we are looking for specific things to determine the operation instead of identifying like what the action is, like what's actually happening in the problem. Are they combining things? Are they um, creating multiple groups of things? Like what does this look like? What are we visualizing here? I think that that is an imperative skill for us to transfer like the problem solving we're doing in class to the real world. Students aren't going about the real world and transferring what's happening into like math sentences or math situations by following a flow chart. They are going out into the world or will go out into the world and see that, oh, okay, I'm buying three of this item and two of this item, and they have to have enough experience with the action that is that operation in order to determine what they would do to find the total of their grocery store run. I talked about this a little bit on Instagram, but anytime we are trying to make things 
easier for students, I want us to be really careful that we're not taking the thinking out of it. And I feel like the flow chart, while it is helping students get to the right operation, I don't think that it is really helping students um, internalize what these math actions mean, what these operations in math mean, what that looks like in the real world. Um, and how that looks different in different situations too, because we know like for division, for example, there are different types of division situations. We talked about this in the multiplying fractions video. There are different types of multiplying fraction situations. And so even though it can be tough and it can be challenging, I think it's worthwhile work to get students to really grapple with that instead of giving them a flow chart that they have to memorize and that really kind of bypasses all of that thinking and all of that struggle, because we know learning comes through the struggle. So those are my thoughts around this flow chart. I would love to chat with you in the comments. Let me know what you think. And if you're somebody who is wondering, okay, I'm using this flow chart now. I agree with what you're saying, but what should I actually be doing with problem solving? Like what is a strategy or a framework that I can use with students that does work all the time, that translates really well to the real world? Well, I want you to go watch the video on your screen. In that video, I walk you through the exact framework I use with students and spoiler alert, it works all the time and it is a framework that I pretty much use in my everyday life.